Welcome to Rebuild a Toy. Well, I suppose it's time for me to answer ten questions. I was challenged by Backyard Tag to answer ten questions, and so I finally collected those ten from folks that have subscribed to the channel. So I'll do my best to answer these questions. First question comes from autodriven.164. How many cars do you have? And I think we're talking about die-cast cars here, not one-to-one -one cars. Uh, so the short answer is I have 65 cars that are still on card, and then I have 140 cars that are loose. So the total is just over 200. And I've made a quick video so you can see some of those vehicles. So just kind of a quick rundown of our vehicles. Most, Pretty much all of our vehicles are stored here on the tower unless they're still on the card. So I thought I'd show you these first. So kind of the Jeep world over here on the top. These are, I kind of quickly organized a few of these. They were in a gigantic pile on the floor. So, <laughs> But there's no real order to it other than here. I put all of our pink cars together. Those are the pink vehicles. Um, a couple of trucks there. Again, not not necessarily any specific order. Uh, as you can see, we have a pretty good mix of licensed vehicles and fantasy vehicles. I will say that in all the towers, I'll show them in a minute, the towers are mostly full of fantasy vehicles. So we have quite a few fantasy models. But you see some fantasy models mixed in here as well. Get the focus going there. Here. So we try not to have too many duplicates. Uh, there's a few <clears throat> we have duplicates, usually because I really like the casting, for example. Uh, here at the bottom, there's a few trucks here at the bottom, and then our tracking tr tracking trucks here, all the trucks that work good on the track, with the exception of this one, which I have over here next to our emergency tower. So emergency tower, I've got police, fire, rescue vehicles until I ran out of those and then I filled the rest of the slots with fantasy cars. So the rest of those, the ones in jail, they were fantasy cars. And then coming around over to this tower quickly, uh, I do have I do have an uh, ambulance here that wouldn't fit on the emergency tower. Oh, there's an open slot. There's a couple open slots here on the fantasy side. And then I'll go around the back here real quick. And the last of the fantasy cars here. That's uh, the only treasure hunt I have right there. Lots of glow wheels. They're not together either. They're all over the place. But uh, we'll be racing glow wheels here in a little bit. But there should all be fantasy cars back there. So... That's it. That's the bulk of our cars. I haven't counted them yet. But I'd say we're... I think the tower holds about 140, so we're probably... With the ones on card, we're probably getting close to 200 total. But most of them are off card, loose, and on the tower to be played with. As far as vehicles on card, I have these, which I really uh, purchased for intending to use for trade. I didn't get a complete set of the uh, Zamax, so that's probably not going to happen. I'll probably end up just opening those up. Uh, the DeLoreans, I don't know that those are really worth trading anymore. I've been finding those more and more. Uh, I've got a couple of these uh, Jadas, which again, I think with just the two of them, probably just end up opening those up too. And I have a few loose vehicles here that I picked up from uh, a trade recently. And then inside this box, this was a uh, 50 pack of basic vehicles that you can buy from Amazon. And uh, originally, they're all short cards is what comes in this box. Uh, and we have been pulling out of here, and then as I buy new cars, I put them in here. 
So we still have 45 cars on card in this box. I'm not going to pull them all out, but uh, some of them are on long cards because they've been pulled off the peg, and some of them are still short cards that came in the original box. But in all, probably about, I think I've counted up about 65 vehicles. Oh, I still have a, a few here that also came in uh, as part of a trade. Uh, these vehicles here came in as part of a trade. And then I have this five pack that also was uh, part of a trade. So with all these combined, I've got about 65 ish cards still cars still on card or, or in package. But uh, those will eventually will either go out and trade or they'll just be open and played with. So that's all the vehicles that we have. There aren't anything. There aren't any others. All right. Question number two comes from Backyard Tag. What is your favorite car movie? My favorite car movie is Bullet from 1968, starring Steve McQueen. In this movie, there is a rivalry between a 1968 Ford Mustang 390 GT 2 Plus 2 Fastback, say that three times fast, and a 1968 Dodge Charger 440 Magnum. In real life, these two vehicles were very evenly matched, but classic rivalry of Ford versus Mopar and also, the Mustang is a manual transmission, and the Dodge Charger is an automatic. So, great uh, rivalries there, and there's a 10-minute chase scene, which is phenomenal in this movie, and there are a number of other gems. I won't go down that rabbit hole, but there are another number of other vehicle gems in that movie. But for those two vehicles, the 68 Mustang Fastback and the 68 Charger Magnum, those are the two main vehicles in the movie and that's why I like the movie. All right, question number 3 also come from uh this comes from JR's Diecast Cars. How long have you been collecting Diecast? Well, first I am the first to admit I don't really consider myself much of a collector. I'm more of an enthusiast uh because cars are a way that I connect with my kids. We have playtime with cars and buy them cars and it's kind of a thing that we do together uh, but I do purchase far more cars than we need for <laughs> for playtime so I guess from that perspective I'm somewhat of a collector um, I've been accumulating die cast uh, since May of 2018 so not very long at all uh, it was kind of a combination of things that started it uh, I bought a 50 pack of basic Hot Wheels on Amazon uh, those were really intended to be kind of little rewards for the kids uh, with school and things like that. I also found the Cyclone 5000 racetrack uh, on an auction on eBay. And this is a racetrack that I had as a kid. And I purchased that and I started getting these ideas of what I could do as I realized that this track is pretty underrepresented on the internet. If you do a search for it, you will find that there is very little information. And if you do a search on YouTube, as far as I know, I'm the only one that's got videos of this track. So whether it's worth saving the track for the Diecast community or not, I don't really know. Uh, but I do know that it is definitely underrepresented on the internet. So I thought that I had an opportunity to kind of bring this track out and let other people see it. And so that's kind of where the idea for starting the channel came from. I also, around that same time, acquired some Hot Wheels track very inexpensively here local. So I cleaned that track up and I ended up with a bunch of uh, turns. And that's when I built the Spiral Tower. So uh, that information is also on my channel. I did a video of the Spiral Tower. So kind of all those things came together at the same time to, to uh, form the process where I started really collecting diecast. All right, the next question also comes from JR's diecast cars. Question number four, do you do any trading at all? I haven't until very recently. I did my first trade with JG24 diecast. So I don't really have a lot of what I would consider trade stock in my collection. As mentioned, most of what I have is mainline. Uh, I primarily race these vehicles on the track with the kids and so that really means that I need vehicles with plastic wheels so that means mainline vehicles so there's not really a lot there to trade the cars have obviously been played with and beat up so they're not really 
you know, collector quality cars. I do have a few on card, but again, they're mainline vehicles. So I have purchased a few of the adult collectibles and they're just not for me. I'm not I don't have a place to display them, and it's not really what I want to do with cars. So I traded a few of those off to uh, JG24 Allen and JG24 Diecast uh, for some mainline cars that I could race on the track. So that being said, if I have something that you would like, I do have some vintage die, uh, vintage Matchbox cars that now that I've raced those on the Cyclone track, I don't know that I'm going to keep them. Uh, if you're interested in trading those for some more recent mainline cars send me an email see what we can work out all right question number five comes from mr mom's racing what do you do for a living well i am a computer programmer and i'm going to stop there because usually when i say that people's eyes glaze over and they don't really want to hear the rest of it so if you are also into the it field and you're more you're interested in more detail what i do for a living feel free to send me an email. Otherwise, we'll stop there, and you don't have to worry about it. We'll just focus on diecast. <laughs> I understand. It's not something a lot of people are interested in. Question number six comes from autodriven.164. What is your email address? I have not posted that, and the reason is I didn't think to do that. So I've gone ahead, and on the About page on the Rehabilitoy channel, I have posted our email address and it is very simply rehabilitoy at gmail.com it was the email address I set up in order to start the uh, YouTube channel so you don't have to worry about writing that down just go to the about page on our channel and you'll find the email address there question number seven comes from diecast cars garage what is the most you have paid for a diecast car well, as mentioned, I primarily collect mainline cars, but I do have those vintage Matchbox cars, and those can get a little pricey if you're buying them on eBay, which is what I did. So the most that I've paid is about $10 for one car. And that includes shipping, which almost doubles the price of the car usually. Most of the cars I pay less than $5 for, but shipping really brings the cost up. And that was for the Matchbox Firebird car that goes with or that was featured on the box for the uh, Cyclone 5000 racetrack. Uh, I also paid about that same amount of money for the Di Tommaso Pantera and I will put links for both of those in the cards if you want to go watch those videos or you can just find them on the channel. Uh, generally I try to only purchase items at auction that I really really want because the shipping adds so much to the cost of the car. I honestly would rather just buy them local, if at all possible. But yeah, $10 is the most I've ever paid for a single car. Question number eight comes from JG24 Diecast. And thank you for the trade recently. Appreciate that. My kids are enjoying the cars that you sent. Do you collect anything besides Diecast vehicles? I do. Um, and again, this is for interaction with the kids. I have a very large collection of wood trains and wood train tracks and wood train accessories and I wouldn't really call myself a collector in the I don't know technical sense because I don't have you know vintage items or a specific model or something I collect I just have tons of wood train tracks so I did create a video a while back where I've taken uh, usually when I set these uh, the tracks up they're only set up for a little while and then we tear them down and put them away but uh, what I try to do is take a picture of the layout before we tear it down. So I have collected many, many, many photographs over the last seven years of all the layouts that I've done. And you can see the tracks get more and more complex as we acquire more and more track parts and junctions and whatever, bridges and things. So uh, there's a video on the channel uh, specifically of all those photographs that uh, I've taken of the different layouts if you're interested in seeing them. Question number nine comes from Match Wheels Diecast. What is your favorite vintage Matchbox or Hot Wheels car? 
I think that this is something that kind of changes and shifts over time for anyone who collects cars, especially vintage ones. But right now, I am very focused on science friction. It is a Hot Wheels casting, a fantasy car from the 1980s. And that brings us to question number 10. What kind of car do you drive? So we're talking about a one-to-one -one car. Uh, I drive a 2014 Kia Forte. It's functional and it's cheap. <laughs> so I've owned a lot of cars over the years. Some of the many cars that I've owned include a 1979 Chevy C10. It had a straight six, 250 straight six with a three on the tree. Uh, I had a 1986 Lincoln Town Car, a 2001 BMW 528. I had a 2007 Toyota Tundra uh, Crew Cab. Uh, I had a 2010 Toyota Prius and about 15 other vehicles. But right now I drive a 2014 Kia Forte. So that's the 10 questions. Um, also supposed to tag some other channels, but uh, I'm just going to let that anyone who listens to this, if you would like to take on the challenge, please feel free to take on the 10 question challenge. It's 10 questions from subscribers to your channel. And so I look forward to hearing your answers to those 10 questions. Thanks for listening.